Welcome to episode number two of solving Ross to community problems. Today we also have five questions and they are more advanced than the previous questions we solved earlier. And these are the questions we will be looking into. We will also find out some interesting things about Ross structure and where does it saves the sudo install packages. Let's start by the first one set Ross to parameters from another node. So the first question for this video is set ROS to parameter from another node. I started recording video and the person has already answered but let me add some explanation to it because this is again really useful as parameters involved. Most of the beginner don't get into parameters but still they are very useful for having a dynamic parameterized simulation for testing and debugging. Now apparently it seems to be of turtle sim service call. So the guy was trying to set the parameter of another node inside of another node. The problem is you cannot do that. You have to utilize some service call that does this for you. By directly saying set parameter, this is not going to work. Now how he did it, he defined a parameter and then utilized RCL interface service set parameters atomically. I don't know why he went for atomically, but the difference between set parameters, simple service call and atomically is that set parameters set only once and atomically provides us two options set all the values or just set nothing sort of a group so he might have multiple values to set that's why he use atomically to set multiple parameters whenever we want so setup is done with the client defining the parameters that they want to set and say request once the connection is done and everything is set up a check for the service connection once that is done these are set how does he found rcl interfaces this is the main question so let's just google it rcl interface service set parameter atomically you get ross to org foxy api service calls all the foxy is EOL, we are working with Humble right now. Click on RCL interface. These are the messages and these are the services that are available that you can utilize. Let's opt in for setup parameters and set parameters atomically. The only difference is with the parameters, you define the parameter, you get the result on call. The result will give you whether setting each parameter was successful or not. For atomically, you have two options, either set all values or just group of it as I have already explained. So let's get back to the problem. He also used async send request. This is again another feature that you can use which says that service is a non-blocking and the call returns immediately and the result can be retrieved later when it's ready. This is useful in cases where you don't want to block the execution of the code while waiting for the service call to complete. The next question is how to add VLP16 model to a custom robot which is a 3D LiDAR and ROS Noitic and Gizibo. It's ROS1 but the procedure is same because the Gazebo plugin is utilized. Let's take a look into our rover package URDF and rover URDF. Let's bring our rover robot ROS2 launch rover and two gazebo. Open another terminal ROS2 topic info about the scan topic. Scan is sensor message laser scanner and basically it gives this scan with a lot of values inside of it. So to find the answer of this, it is a VLP 3D LiDAR, VLP 16. What we have to do is to go into URDF and find for sensor and you will find out the plugins of the sensors. We have the camera sensor, we have the LiDAR sensor, gazebo LiDAR and the type is ray. The plugin is libros ray sensor. This is the point where the difference comes for our VLP 16 from gazebo. We can find out that there are a lot of other options. We are going to go with lib gazebo ROS velodyne laser. That's the difference to add VLP 16 into your robot. Let's press save and call can build again launch ROS to gazebo spawn. Robot is spawned. Let's perform ROS2 topic list. We have the scan topic. Get information about it. Now you can see it is sensor message message point cloud and previously it was laser scan. So this difference has been created. A point cloud has been generated which a VLP16 sensor does. And if we perform ROS2 topic echo of the scan, there are going to be a lot of things. Let me zoom out. Let me get rid of it. So our sensor has been changed from simple LiDAR to 3D LiDAR. Third question is what is the correspondence between the parameters produced by camera calibrator and camera info. Now camera calibration is a process of calibrating your camera with a checkerboard most commonly. That is how it is done. Different angles of checkerboard is provided with the appropriate dimensions of each square. So it calibrates the camera. 
for example if you can see this is sort of a fish eye camera and after calibration you can clearly see a square image and process it accordingly coming back to the question it contains this 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 camera message contains this 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 the problem is how to efficiently publish jml as camera info i cannot find documentation the relation between the camera info message first let's take a look into camera message whenever we run a simulation ros2 launch turtle bot 3 gazebo empty world with the robot set to Waffle Pi, we get a simple robot with a camera for it. ROS2 topic list tells us about there is a camera for it. And when there is a camera topic, there is image rock compressed depth theory and this camera info. The guy is talking about this topic. ROS2 topic info about this. It uses this specific interface. We'll get information for that. ROS2 interface show sensor message camera info. A lot of details are provided because it is a computationally complex things and concepts are a little bit difficult. Now with the ROS2 interface show a lot of explanation is provided and even the links are provided for your understanding how you can build it. The main important thing is there are four matrices DKRP and structure is provided that you have to define the timestamp frame ID then this D matrix which is going to contain distortion parameters then K matrix which is intrinsic camera matrix and there is one more R rectification matrix which is as 3 by 3 then a P matrix is also there which is known as projection camera matrix now a lot of things are provided and information that you can do this this with a lot of definitions so the question was how to efficiently publish it let's go into the code I already have some configuration or YAML file written so I have written YAML file in two formats most of the calibration softwares provide you in this specific format. This is your camera matrix. This is your distortion model, distortion coefficients, rectification matrix and projection matrix. Now for all your cameras, these matrix data is different. Obviously, it is according to the checkerboard size and the camera properties. You can also mention it in this fashion for YAML files. It doesn't matter what syntax you are taking. What matters is how you are processing it. I have already created a Python file for both A and B YAML files. Now this is the A YAML file and let's open camera parameters A. Now this is the A YAML file and we are loading it with the Python node which is publishing on camera info. As we know the message topic type is camera info which is sensor message. So I have provided a direct path to the YAML files and then initiated a camera message. Then with the help of interface that was in the terminal I was able to fill all the values that header and then frame ID camera frame which is going to the message header frame ID. Height and width provided in the YAML file. If I write here height like this I just have to provide it like this the YAML file structure does not matter much what matters is how you load it into your message again these distortion camera matrix intrinsic parameters and rectification all of these are loaded with the help of simple Python code writing process all of this is written in context to loading these data into these variables and putting it into a message structure the binning offsets everything is simply read into these variables which are of message from camera info type then it is published let's take a look let me open two terminals let's close this simulation and perform ROS2 topic list this is the topic we are looking forward for ROS2 topic echo this topic it is not yet published ROS2 run test.py this is the package and you are going to be publishing camera info publisher a and when it is publishing let's stop it again and run it it is not continuously publishing that's why it publishes only once if we take a look into the parameters this is the everything that we have which is loaded from this yaml files into camera info whenever we run it obviously we want this camera formation to be published once you can see all of the values of these arrays are published here you can change these values and they will be updated similarly we can publish the b1 let me ask it for echoing and publish it again now the b parameters are published although the structure was totally different 
and the node for processing is also different. It is loading the parameters in a different way because the structure of the parameters in the YAML files is different. But important thing is all of the values are loaded appropriately. The R matrix, the L matrix, the projection matrix, everything. So that's how you load your parameters using a node. The next part is what is the correspondence between two sets of parameters, camera matrix, rectification, projection matrix, definitions which can be utilized by camera rectification information that we saw interface information i will write the answer in a detailed way so this guy get fulfilling answer so the next question is how to send waypoints to move base using ross by this is not using nav2 simple ross1 navigation stack so it says i'm having trouble creating a node to send waypoints to the move base which is utilized for autonomous motion of a robot considering it to be a mobile robot one by one as each are achieved so these waypoints are provided by another node. The node I have so far is pasted below. He thinks that action server is always up and running. Although few second occasion, the first waypoint has been sent and goal is here. I'm not sure why this is not working. And let's look at some of the responses. It says, okay, I put the statement outside for the return statement. And so he did that. He updated the answer, but still this move basic client wait for result is not actually waiting for the robot to arrive at the goal point so for the loop continues and fail further it finds the server to be down so he asked that can you add raw spin he said no i don't want to add raw spin for some reasons the last remaining problem here is the current problem seems to be that my code does not wait for goals to be achieved before moving despite using this my suggestion would be he should be adding some lines of code here which I will just show you here. I will post it in the answer. For example, here on this specific point where we are waiting for the result, it would be better if we could add some finish time variable that wait for results for 10 seconds. And when you have waited for 10 seconds, then you say the goal is completed or not, but the time limit that I have defined is done. Then you get the results. Otherwise, if it has gone after 10 seconds, 11, 12, 13, you are going to say timed out achieving the goal. So exit this and don't get the result. By this, you might be able to find out that if your application is taking more than the defined time, you can tune the application and also only get the results under this time frame. Second thing can be you can do all the other operations and put this move base navigation on another thread. So the last question is cannot locate node of type this. There are some arguments of ROS1, TF2 packages called transforms are being published. Then there is a package Centiro and GNS driver something output ROS command to load a parameter. Cannot launch the node of type this. Cannot locate the type K in package this. Make sure the file exists. And and you have performed this now the basic problem happening is it is unable to find the node the first thing you do is to source your workspace if you have installed in your workspace let's start from the parent path home install setup dot bash this is source then you can access all the packages inside of it now for example if i want to run a node ros2 run drive tv3 and i press double tab i get all the available nodes if i say run this node it is going to say no executable found or in such a scenario of ROS1 this is going to come up but where to find the executable of actually installed packages using sudo apt something so for that we have to move into an unknown area which is opt inside of opt we have ROS so cd ROS double tab humble and inside of that there are a lot of things bin make local something now to get to a specific package you move into lib and you can find a lot of packages there if i just perform list a lot of libraries compiled that can be included and a lot of packages here as well so let's say we are interested in so let's say we are interested in this package gazebo ross because we are familiar with it we will say cd gazebo ross press enter what's inside of it there are two things spawn entity.py and gazebo ross path so ross to run whenever i say gazebo ross i double press tab two nodes come up gazebo ross path and spawn entity which we can find here we can get to see the code of these as well if i say cat spawn entity all of the code for spawn entity we can access it the important part here is to understand that opt ross humble lib contains all of the sudo apt installed packages okay coming to the part of messages if we want to find what ross to interface list where all of these interfaces actually are they are inside of this 
is include directory and here all of the messages are present with the directories inside of that there are header files for example we are interested in Ackerman messages or let's get to something familiar and as we did with the camera info manager so we recently did with camera info so ross to it was in sensor message right so cd sensor message we can see it is here then sensor message list sensor message what is inside of it it can be distortion model image encoding message is also there let's go into message list these are all the messages of sensor messages we recently used camera info we can then look into how does it performs all of the things camera info is there and this camera dot h is there so that's where uh, you can find everything in the lib and include of ross installation if it is not there it is not installed all of these questions were really interesting to me and i loved solving them they were really useful as well so the learning outcomes from these questions would be finding the packages installed in which location second important one would be camera calibration why they are useful in real world projects they are essential things understanding importance of ros2 parameters and editing urdf file for gazebo plugins